Welcome to my garden shed. We're in here, even though it's partly sunny <clears throat> outside with the wind, it's still a little bit cool. So we're going to do the taping in here. So you want to say anything or you want me to just... Joyce just said she likes looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. you did. Yes, honey. She was trying to get situated because <laughs> her, the way the table is, yeah. this is an old table. Very old. Was oh, this Vic and Edna's table? Yes. Our neighbor, old neighbors? Yeah. But her feet either have to go this way or that way. And I said, well, maybe you should go that way toward the camera. And she said. But I like looking at you <laughs> or toward you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so nice. where's my pen? <laughs> <laughs> I like looking at you. <laughs> you had to I say like that. Looking at Joy too. <laughs> So we got our mics on and everything? Yeah, okay. we're good to go. So you got to enjoy? Yep, I do. And let me see. This was from, what's the date today? This was from yesterday. I wrote this in here. And I was sitting where I usually have my quiet time. I'm so enjoying looking out our windows and seeing Gull Water. Lake Water. open, except along the shoreline, there's still some ice, but, and I'm so enjoying this morning watching two beautiful white trumpeter swans swimming right in front on our shoreline. Or the, the young ones or the... No, then I said, and just now another one floated in, but with a gray neck and a gray colored head. So I Googled. This is what it said, all baby swans, they're known as cygnets, C-Y-G-N-E-T-S. They're born gray, and as they gradually get to older they start to lose the gray color and it turns white so the one that was here was probably a year old what are they called cygnets c-y-g-n-e-t-s i did not know that i think they'd be called swanets <laughs> no Instead this is what it says <laughs> So uh, Google says swans mate for life. They always return to the same yeah. area so every so year. These are the same ones. Yes, and they live up to 30 years. They build huge nests at the edge of the water, six to 12 feet across, we, 18 inches deep. And we know where that is. You were with us, weren't you, when we saw their yes. nest, Joy? On the on the bay, mm -hmm. Gull Lake Bay. We didn't get too close because yeah, you know. So the female swans lay between three to eight eggs. Both parents take turns incubating the eggs, and there are. This is what Google said: around thirty thousand trumpeter swans in minnesota it seemed like a lot three last year three little ones wasn't it joy i think oh you're talking about the nest this one here it had three i don't know baby, young ones yeah and so the swans themselves are 59 to 71 inches long they're big they weigh 15 to 30 pounds, and their wingspan is seven to eight and a half feet wide. Yeah, they're, I've seen a few of them this year flying over, you know, yeah. and then they have that trumpet. Yes. And you can hear one time, well, they were flying from the south, and I was on the north side of the house, but I could hear the sound. 
And what it was, it was the wind going through their wings before I could see them. Oh. I saw a flock of 10 of them. Mm-hmm. Well, that's quite the deal. Yeah. Um, and then a few hours later, Steve got me off the treadmill, and he said, you got to see this. So what were you enjoying watching? Well, I was talking to Joy about something, and... On the phone, and I was standing in my, or I was in my study, and I was looking out over the lake while I was talking to her. Well, I just got her on the phone. I says, "Oh wow!" <laughs> and here was a golden eagle that was flying right along the edge of the lake, and that is huge. That was so huge, and there was a crow that was following it, but then it landed in the tree right next. The uh, eagle did? On the east side of our property, and so that's when I when I got off the phone with Joy, then I went and got Joyce, and she just got there in time because it was a little hard to see it in the tree, but then when she got there, she saw it, but then it flew, and you mm -hmm. saw it. Yeah. And what is there? Did you look that yeah, up? Yeah, I lo there? looked that up too. Google says they are dark brown. They're about the same size as bald eagles. Their body is 30 to 40 inches. Their wingspan is six to seven feet. Six to seven feet. This one seemed larger to me than that. Of course, bald eagles are big, too. Yeah. Their weight is about 10 pounds. The female usually lays two eggs and often does most of the incubation with the male providing her food. They also live up to 30 years. And they prey primarily on larger rodents and rabbits, Sorry, Joy, not going to get your rabbits. Sometimes birds and reptiles, but they've also been known occasionally <clears throat> to attack lambs, young deer, and even young bear. So they're, they're different than the American bald eagle and what they feed on. So yeah, that's they it. Are, they don't stay the bald eagles they stay here but i don't think we've had any golden eagles that stay They're just passing through yeah i don't migrating know it's somewhere. pretty rare that we see one yeah so anyway that's the that enjoy usually it's this time of year and i haven't seen a robin yet but i've heard robins yeah by the time this airs hopefully we'll have seen an, a robin yes have oh, you, good. At your house? Where they? Well, good. Yeah, so I've, I heard one at the Red Umbrella. Yeah. So. So what you got for us today, Steve? Well, we, got, we were talking about being led and controlled by the Holy Spirit versus led and controlled by the flesh, our old, that old flesh. It's our spirit man is where the new creation is. We've been in a longer series now on being led by the spirit, and this is one aspect of it that we wanted to bring out. And see, so we're to be spirit ruled. It's our spirit, but with the Holy Spirit joined with our spirit. See, we have God joined together by with us by His Spirit. That's what the Bible says versus being ruled by our flesh. Um, in other words, we could say that we're spiritually minded versus being fleshly, or sometimes we say carnally minded. <clears throat> and I'm just going to start, we're going to look starting at verse 11, but I, am, I think I'm going to read this again, though it's good for us. And you can get your Bibles if you don't have them. This is Romans 8. Starting at verse 5, 
Do you want to read part of that, or you want me to? Well, well why don't we you did, read it out of there. Yeah, yeah, you did last time, so why don't we read it out of okay. the Passion so this Bible. Is the, this is my mom's Bible. Yeah. Those oh who God. are motivated by the flesh. This is verse 5 of Romans 8. Those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves. But those who live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to pursue spiritual realities. For the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset controlled by the Spirit finds life and peace. In fact, the mindset focused on the flesh fights God's plan and refuses to submit to his direction because it cannot. For no matter how hard they try, God finds no pleasure with those who are controlled by the flesh. But when the Spirit of God empowers your life, you are not dominated by the flesh, but by the spirit. And if you are not joined to the spirit of the anointed one, you are not of him. Now Christ lives his life in you. And even though your body may be dead because of the effects of sin, his life-giving spirit imparts life to you because you are fully accepted by God. And then we start where we verse didn't 11. do verse 11 before. Right. So we're up to verse 11 now. So that you kind of got that sense there again. It's really something, isn't it? The difference, the difference between life and death. Mm -hmm. Life and peace is what comes when we're led by the Spirit. When we're controlled by the Holy Spirit, when we're spiritually minded, Life and peace will come, otherwise it will be death. But then this is so interesting, verse 11. <clears throat> but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, that's what the Bible teaches. He dwells in you. He lives in you. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. The King James says he will quicken your mortal bodies. What does it say in that one? For verse 11 there. He breathes life into you. Through his spirit who dwells in you. And that's a, a scripture that I pray every day for the circle of prayer the Lord's given to me to pray for. And the same spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you. He shall quicken or make alive your mortal body. That's his physical body. In other words, just a prayer that as the Holy Spirit is in us, every cell of our being can be quickened by him. You know, strengthened. Every cell, you know, sickness driven out. Anything that would try to harm us is driven out of our bodies. It's a very good scripture for healing, for prayer for healing. Yes. And so that's, that's a good one there. But it goes on, therefore, brothers and sisters, I'll say, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The things of the flesh, again, it's bringing it out. It leads to death, not life. And then here's the theme verse we've had. Verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. This version says the mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. Wow, that's good. Yeah. Impulses of the Holy Spirit who dwells right within us. 
Those impulses are, a lot of times, are thoughts. Remember, we've talked about thoughts that he gives to us. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. The things of the flesh, they would lead us to fear. If we're focused on the things of the flesh, fear can try to take over. But here it says the Holy Spirit, that who we received, is not bringing us into bondage of fear. This says leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. Do you deal with that, never being good enough? You know, that's what the, the enemy will try to do. The word Satan, it means accuser, accuser of the brethren. And that's what he always try to do, accuse us, not being good enough. You're not good enough. Some people have been told that by people on earth, you know, could be parents or teachers or you'll never amount to anything or you're not good enough. Well, that's, that's the way, that's not the spirit of God. That's that old way of the flesh and thinking in the terms of the flesh, carnally minded thinking. I'm not good enough. What we need to realize is that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He became sin for us so that we could become right, righteous before God the Father. And that's who we are. And we, if we get to it, we can bring that out with all these different examples on that other page. Yeah. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. And we can say that because he is our Abba. That's like in English it would be like the word daddy. You know, he's our dad. This says That's, beloved father. Yeah. So it's you're trapped there, aren't you, Joy? Or can you can you go in the fridge? I need an energy bar. It's, there's one sitting right on, it's on the right side of the fridge on top of that pink thing where the energy, there's some in a little bag there. And I had left over from Sunday, I can tell. We have, oftentimes we have a energy shake, we call it. Herbalife, remember we told you about that once? <laughs> David and Brittany, they help us with that. And we get... Herbalife shakes, but I can tell it's wearing off. <laughs> so it's time for, for. Uh, but you received, you didn't receive that, a spirit that brings fear and bondage to fear, a trap to fear, imprisonment to fear, chains of fear. Thank you, Joy. But you receive the spirit of adoption by where you can call, cry, Abba, Father. That's exactly who he is and what he is for us. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And so that's... that's I like how are. it says it here, for the Holy Spirit makes God's fatherhood real to us as he whispers into our innermost being, you are God's beloved child. Thank you, Lord. Just focus on that. And I'm so sure. looking at these examples here that you, this was from several weeks ago, mm -hmm. um, that thought, that condemnation or that Fear, you're not gonna, you're not doing it right. You're not thinking right. Uh, you're not good enough. Whatever these different examples, the Holy Spirit can show you how to be healthy. He's eating healthy energy bars that I make for him. I almost dropped them. They on aren't the floor. candy bars. They're healthy. 
But the Holy no, Spirit. Good stuff in there. The Holy Spirit can show us how to be healthy, how, what to do, what to eat, um, practical things, what, what things to avoid, what types of exercise are best for my body. Steve's, it'll be different. And um, it's so practical, well, that's, the Holy uh, Spirit. That thing <laughs> is very practical. I mean, extremely practical. Yeah. Everyday practical. <laughs> and then there's the, honey in here, so it's sticking it. <laughs> this next one uh, that you wrote down is the Holy Spirit will show you what to say or not say to someone. And then you had who you have issues with. And what came to me was, or who has issues with you. Now in 42 years of pastoring, I personally have had to rely on the Holy Spirit a lot for that. The right answer to someone uh, regarding their observation or their comment or their like or dislike. So I right away thought, oh, Holy Spirit, you're, you've been so faithful. You continue to help me to know what to say or true. not say. You know, that's been true for us pastoring, but it's true for you. If yes. If you're a teacher. Or if you're a human being, if you work in a anyone, a, a clerk in a store, you know, any of the well, retail stores, or or if you work in a nursing home, or you know, wherever, a student. If, if you have your own business, you really run into things with customers. You know, just the way it is in life. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit will show you what to say, but what not to say. Sometimes what not to say at a certain time is just as important as what to say. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think it's best not to say anything. You know, it's, I think we get in trouble more by saying too much quite often than, than not saying enough. Although that you can get in, I mean, you can not communicate too, but I for good. my personality, if someone tells me an untruth and I know it's not true, I will tell them that I disagree with that. I've had that different times a conversation with someone and they'll say something that I know is not accurate because I just talked to that other person. From them themselves, they had shared what was true. And so in a situation like that, I don't want to appear to be um, a liar or dishonest. So yeah, there's so times when, to, yeah. But there, sometimes there, again, timing is important too. Yes. Sometimes you can tell if someone is really down and out. I mean, they've had a terrible day. Yes. You know, I mean, everything's been going wrong. Right. And what you say to them could be the last straw. <laughs> the last thing they need to hear. <laughs> but and, you can say something that builds them up. And but then, then it's the time to bring them encouragement and say, yeah. well, that's where it's so good to know the word yourself and then be able to bring the word. Because the word brings encouragement. Yes. To people. So the, um, the next thing Steve had written down is the Holy Spirit can show you how to reconcile with someone. And that's in that same, um, it's very similar. Someone who, um, there's just challenges with them. Maybe... No. Short term or long term or whatever, but he can show you how to reconcile. The and, other, and there again, timing is 
a lot of times I think we want to force the issue, but somebody may not, it might not be the timing to do it. We can't wait too long either, but sometimes it needs to, the ground for that, for the right seeds to be planted and then come to harvest for reconciliation. It takes a little time or it's the time. Sometimes it, forgiveness is needed on your behalf first. Mm -hmm. It's pretty important one, the thing of reconciliation. I think there may be people watching today that I think we're coming to the end of our time frame here too, aren't we? So I wonder if we shouldn't bring closure sure. with that, that. If you have someone that you you need to be reconciled with, you know, that can be parents, it could be children, it could be an employer, employees, customer, like we said before, or a business owner, or a teacher, or a student, or sister, did I say that already? No, you didn't say sister. How about husband? Sister, or brother, husband. <laughs> wife. <laughs> wife. Well, let's pray right now for yeah. you. It's not an accident that you're watching this today. And if you're led by the Spirit, are spiritually minded, He will lead you to the very things, to the very thoughts that, that you need to help you to come to that place of reconciliation with that person. But it may start with forgiveness. You know, just forgiveness in your heart, and then there may come a time when you actually forgive them too, but it would start between you and the Lord. But let's pray about yeah. that together. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh. we pray for those that are watching today, and we pray for reconciliation. Yes, we do. That, they're, that they may reconcile, that the thing that has come in to bring division and along with that, like we were talking about fear, things of the unknown, separation, or that, the, that your Holy Spirit that, that lives within us, that you will guide them and direct them in the word. They will be strengthened with your word, with your powerful word. And you will bring direction, you will bring the thoughts that they need and just help them to come to that place where true reconciliation may come. And oh, what a wonderful reuniting that will be. Instead of being separated, there will be a uniting. And we know that's what love does. Love always unites. Sin always separates, but love unites. And so that's what we pray for in the name of Jesus. Yes. That's enough of every name. But also, going back to that scripture, Romans 8, 11, that the same spirit that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead mm -hmm. dwells within you. He shall quicken your mortal bodies. And we pray that for those that are dealing with sickness, disease, yes. and pain today. Yes. In Jesus' name, we pray for wholeness and healing. By your spirit within, Lord, we know your healing comes from the inside out, from your spirit out into our bodies, and we receive that now in Jesus' name. Yes. And everyone Lord. in agreement with me said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, blessings. We love you. Have a great day. <laughs>